With the rise of remote work, it's become really important to have an area where you and your colleagues can also engage with each other outside of those structured workspaces that we typically see in Microsoft Teams. Because let's face it, Microsoft Teams has been built for projects, it hasn't been built for communities. And well, we can tell that just by looking at social media platforms, the experience on those platforms is very different. Teams was built with projects in mind. For example, if you pop a post into your Teams feed, even if it was really well received, you'll find it quickly disappears because the posts in channels are always built on a timeline view. The most recent post will always take the priority and the view for many other content. Imagine if one of the other platforms like Facebook done that, well, we probably wouldn't engage with that very well if we only saw posts that were put on the timeline rather than the engagement of posts ensuring that we saw the most relevant content that helped us stay on the platform. But with that in mind, what do we do? Do we go and buy another app or do we look at a different solution? What if I told you we can go and have a look at Viva Engage? Yes, Viva Engage is effectively Microsoft Yammer. And to understand how that now works, I'm gonna take you back in time. I'm gonna consider what happened back in 2012 and what on earth happened to Microsoft Yammer and where it stands today. But not only that, I'm also gonna show you how to use a new Viva Engage platform to build a community and also share storyline posts that we'd normally see in other social media apps, all inside a Microsoft 365 and all at no additional cost and tools that you can use today. And before we do that, I'd love it if you hit that like button to let me know this content has helped you. Not only that, hit that subscribe button to find more great content like this to help you work with the tools that you already have. So let's head back into 2012. Microsoft has announced the purchase of Office Networking Service Yammer for $1.2 billion in cash. Yammer will join the Microsoft Office division, headed by Kurt Delbeni, who stated that the acquisition of Yammer was a big step forward for the two companies. We're really excited about today's announcement. Yammer is the perfect partner to unleash the potential of enterprise social networking. So over a decade later, and $1.2 billion, what on earth happened to Microsoft Yammer? Well, let's consider why on earth Microsoft would have bought it in the first place? Because Yammer was a platform that allowed business engagement very much like a social media platform. At that time, we were seeing different platforms like Facebook introducing Facebook for Business and other platforms coming out. And that equally meant that Microsoft had to respond and provide a solution that also done much the same. And yes, it had access to SharePoint, but SharePoint was a great tool to communicate with people but it didn't really allow the idea of communities and the ability to post and share ideas. That was certainly not possible inside of SharePoint unless you went and built customizations at cost and also had to support it yourself. So with the purchase of Yammer, it came at a great opportunity. The idea of social media in the workplace that could effectively improve collaboration in your own teams, but it didn't work out so well. Now you could point at many problems of why Yammer didn't really get off the ground. One of the biggest ones was that Yammer really stood isolated. It wasn't engaged in the Microsoft 365 platform. It even had its own separate logon to log in into Yammer. That meant it was very disconnected when people came to using services in Microsoft 365. Why would they ever want to remember a different password to log into Yammer when they can just seamlessly log on to the other services like SharePoint? Often companies would need to push Yammer and that would take a lot of time and energy to do. And of course, while well, the pandemic happened, that should have been a time where Yammer really thrived because equally we were all remote working. We all needed a space to collaborate and engage with each other to give us that ability to have something more social. But again, it just didn't happen. And that's because Microsoft Teams was the big app at that time. We're adding a new tool and an experience to Office 365. Microsoft Teams, a chat-based workspace. Everyone was moving to Teams, wanted to Teams for workspaces, chat and calling. The focus was always on Teams. That again meant that Yammer fell into the background. It wasn't actively used or pushed by many teams. 
And then, post-pandemic, Yammer really continued to have that flavour. It never really got off the ground. But then Microsoft decided to rebrand and to give a new energy to Yammer by calling it Viva Engage and putting it as part of their new Viva platform. And that's what we have access to today. That meant that Yammer or Viva Engage would be integrated into Microsoft Teams. If we're spending all of our days in Teams, it made sense to put Yammer or Viva Engage as part of that product. And that now means that you can access Viva Engage today and you can still take advantage of what Yammer did really well. Build communities to share ideas and engage with your peers in a platform that feels more like social media than it does with Microsoft Teams for projects and workspaces. So with that in mind, how on earth do we use Viva Engage? And how can we have it that we could build a community to share with your peers or have elements like storyline posts that we'd see inside of social media apps? Well, let's dive into Viva Engage and see how it all works and build communities and more and take you on that journey. So let's get started with Viva Engage, or as it was known, Yammer. Now remembering that Engage is part of Viva, and Viva, well, is integrated in Microsoft Teams. So what we need to do is go into Microsoft Teams. On the left-hand side, select the free dot menu. And here I can see Viva Engage, but if you can't see it, just go into the search box and type in the word Engage to find Viva Engage. We therefore will left-click it, and now we'll be able to see Viva Engage. Now the best way to get back to it is to right click and we're going to pin that into Microsoft Teams so we don't need to open it every single time. And now once we're in Viva Engage, it'll feel very like the old Microsoft Yammer. Now as you can see on the left hand side, you'll see a home feed. This allows you to see all the most recent updates inside of Viva Engage that's happening around you in your own network. You can very easily also go to the top share thoughts, ideas, or updates, just like you do on any other social platform. On the left-hand side, you'll also see a note of your name, and here's your own personal page of all of your updates, much like, again, you'd see on your own social media profile or your own LinkedIn page. Here we can see the number of followers you've got across the company, posts that you've made, and also any engagement with those as well. And it's really easy to post inside of Viva Engage. All you'll need to do is left click. And you can actually see here, I can begin to share a discussion post. But equally, I can click in the drop down menu and change this into a question, which changes the user experience. And likewise, I can change it to a praise, or I can also select a poll directly within Viva Engage. So depending on your requirement, you can go ahead and then begin creating your new post to share with the wider company and network. And now I've created a question on my storyline. I can also go ahead and add people or tag them into this question. It might be that Adele has more information on this and therefore it's useful to tag Adele, which I've now done here. But you can also see it's going to appear in my own storyline. And your storyline will of course be available across the company. So don't put anything personal in any of your posts that you wouldn't want to be seen by others. Once that's done, we can go ahead and click on Ask, and that'll post into my own storyline, allowing others to then catch up and also respond to this question as well, in line, so we can get the relevant answers quickly from the wider organisation. If we change the view here and look at it through Megan's account inside of Inviva Engage, we can see it's a different experience. On Megan's home screen, we see all of the posts that Alex has been creating, and therefore there's an ability to go and answer these questions and help out Alex directly from the home feed. So here, Megan, go ahead and then like the question and also post an answer as well to this question to help out Alex get the relevant answer. And with Megan's answer now added to that question, you'll see a different experience. Here, we can actually mark it as the best answer or we can actually vote it to be the best answer. That means that depending on the answers that come back, the community can decide on the best appropriate answer. So next time someone searches for this question, they're gonna find the right answer the first time. Here, we'll mark it with a tick next to it, and we'll also upvote it as well. And that will also appear to others that also see this question inside of Viva Engage. That's a very different experience that we see in Microsoft Teams. And not only that, as we can see on Megan's home screen here, 
these posts are not in timeline order. No, it's based upon the engagement with the post. Here we can see something that was posted yesterday morning. This was posted just now, and again, another post from yesterday morning. So depending on the engagement, we'll decide where it appears on the feed, much like other social media platforms, and also considering that Microsoft Teams only puts posts in a timeline view. It's nothing to do with engagement, and that's the big difference with Viva Engage and the way it works in someone's home feed and providing relevant questions that you can help with and also others can see in the company. If you're Viva Engaged out, let's take a short break to let you know what we can do and how we can help you. Because we built our own community. Yes, your 365 coach is exactly that. We built it to help you get the most from the tools that you already have. So if you're struggling in Microsoft 365, and need coaching, consulting, or on-demand learning masterclasses, check out the link below. And you can engage with us, and we can help you on that journey. Not only that, if you want to find out more, we've got a free Microsoft 365 ebook you can download today on our website as well. Otherwise, let's dive back into Viva Engage, or maybe Yammer, and find out what more it can do for you. But what about communities? This is what the whole tutorial today is about. It's great seeing the ability to post questions on your own home feed and have colleagues help you out. But we need to create an area where you and your colleagues with a common interest can come and hang out. And that's not in Microsoft Teams as an actual project or a workspace. Well, inside of Viva Engage, we can go over to communities on the left-hand side that you have access to already. For example, the Team Social is an area that Alex has actually created and shared with his peers he can get back and view any posts inside of that community. We also have access to the All Company community because, as of its name, that's also sharing content across the whole company. So do consider what you share in the All Company community. But of course, we now need a different community. So let's head back into Communities, and then we're going to click on Create a Community. We can now give the community a name, a description in the first instance. With that now done, we're creating a community regarding remote working, allowing people to drop in and post if they need a couple of minutes and talk to their peers. Of course, it's really important to have that engagement with others, even if they're working remotely. Now, of course, we can also begin adding members into here. It might be that we already have a list of people working remotely, or people that want to be part of this interest group. So I can go ahead from our internal directory and begin adding colleagues into here. But importantly, we can also set the security of the community itself. You can see by default, it's currently set to public that anyone in your network can view and join the community. It's purely optional and they can come and go as they please, just like they would in other apps like Microsoft Teams. But we can also click on edit and change that to become a private community, meaning only approved people will be allowed into this community. But with many communities, we want it to be accessed by all. So I'm going to set this to a public community and go ahead and click on Create. And our community is now built. Welcome to the remote working community, where you and your peers can join and also share updates and posts just like you would on other social media platforms. And of course, the experience is much the same as what we saw on our home feed. You can ask a discussion, a question, a poll, or also give praise to other colleagues and they can also answer directly into your post. Now, as with any community, it's all about the engagement, therefore ensuring that you ask relevant questions and keep the community going is really important. But as you can see, this doesn't come with the structure of Microsoft Teams. There are no channels, and also it feels more familiar to social media apps that you've used previously. But, of course, it does allow file uploads because communities may need files. By clicking on the Files tab here, you can actually see Opens inside of SharePoint. And that's because all of the Viva Engage communities are backed up by SharePoint and Microsoft 365 groups. I mean, you can share content with others securely inside of this platform with SharePoint behind the scenes. But remembering that Microsoft Teams is probably the better app to use for projects and more, whereas communities, well, keep it just for that. And what about storylines? Social media platforms always have stories. So if you're used to using Snapchat, Instagram, or TikTok stories, well, there's a similar capability inside of Viva Engage. 
By clicking on the left hand side for storylines, you can now begin to create a new storyline. And it's actually something personal to you. It could be what you're working on at the moment or going into an important meeting. Once again, we can use the same experience that we saw on our home screen when creating our posts. Let's go ahead and add in some content here to let the team know what I'm doing today and also what my focus points are. With our text now added, of course we should consider story posts should be a little bit more graphical. So I'm gonna go ahead and select a GIF and here I can search for a GIF. Let's look at something to do with a green space. As we can see, I'll go ahead and select this image here and then I can go ahead and post this into my storyline feed. With that now done, that'll be shared on my storyline and also my colleagues will be able to see it directly through Viva Engage as well. As we can see, the storyline is then posted to the feed for Alex's own account, which one I'm logged into. But if we go ahead and have a look at Megan's account, well, Megan can also see it through her home feed because those storyline posts are shared across the company. So yes, do be aware that when you're actually creating these storyline posts, they will also be available across the company. And not only that, they do not expire. Yes, typically after 30 days, I'll drop off the feed as they will no longer be relevant, but they will not automatically expire or delete after 24 hours like most social media platforms do. So ensure your storylines are still kept with the company guidelines in mind and only share content that you'd want to share with others. Nothing personal as such that you would also not want to put in an email because yes, the wider company can see your storyline posts. So can we also access Viva Engage across other apps in 365? And of course we can. In fact, let's fire up the new version of Microsoft Outlook, which I know is pretty divisive. But on the left hand side, you can go ahead and click on the apps button. And here we've got a Viva Engage button. Select that button here. And once again, we can right click it just like we did in Teams and select pin. And now we have Viva Engage accessible in Microsoft Outlook. We can access all of our different communities in Viva Engage. We can also access our own home screen to keep up to date with everything that's going on in the organization and also post updates on your own feed, all directly in Microsoft Outlook. That's a quick way that you can also engage with the Engage platform inside of Outlook. And also, if you prefer a web browser, you can go over and open office.com to open your office portal. Left hand side once again, click on the app launcher and then select engage. And now you're going ahead and access this platform through the web. And guess what? If we look at the URL at the top of the screen in the left, well, you're gonna see yammer.com because of course, Yammer's powering Viva Engage. So there's many different ways that you can actually interact with Viva Engage in Microsoft 365 how you can post story posts, check out your own home screen to keep up to date with you and your peers and create communities for interest groups that allow people to join freely and have discussions outside of that structure that we see in Microsoft Teams, which is more relevant to projects and also different work streams that we're working on in the company. So certainly don't overlook Viva Engage when you're considering communities in Microsoft 365. So we now know that building communities in Microsoft 365 has another option, Viva Engage, or as it was known, Yammer. And you can take advantage of that today and build out a community for you or your team. And also know some of those limitations, especially with story posts and ensuring that when you create them, well, they're gonna be accessible to the whole company and they certainly don't expire. But equally, we're all of course getting frustrated with paying for more apps. And well, Viva Engage doesn't need any additional funds. Sure, there are additional capabilities that you can take advantage of that come with premium costs inside of Viva Engage. But using the capabilities that I've shown you today will come with pretty much all of the Microsoft 365 business licensing. So you're not required to pay any more to build communities, post storylines and more. And hopefully as this moves forward, especially in the new outlook, we'll see closer integration with the Viva Engage platform, meaning that we can focus on Microsoft Teams for our workspaces and projects, but we also can use Viva Engage as our community platform and build them out and share ideas and also more closely collaborate, especially when it comes to remote working. 
So if you're in need of an enterprise level social media app, don't go buying more apps or looking for other solutions. You can check out Viva Engage and get started today and build something out that you can share with your peers. As with all of these different apps, ensure that you also engage with it yourself. There's no point building a community never to post in it. Of course, no one will engage with that and they'll certainly go back to Microsoft Teams. And of course, I'd love to know what you think of Viva Engage or the old Yammer platform in the comments and how you used it previously or how you may use it in the future. And if you have liked this video, please hit that like button to let me know and also hit that subscribe button to find more great content to help use the tools that you already have. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one.